Hello and welcome to this week's Showcase Sunday. Now, this uh, Showcase Sunday was born by AJ Lakes to showcase businesses who can help our hospitality and tourism businesses across the UK to survive, thrive and future proof, sustain and future proof your businesses. So and this week we have the amazing Matthew Lincoln from Northern Monkey Creative Media who is here to showcase his business and how he helps the hospitality industry moving forward. So, Matthew, do you want me to tell me about yourself, who you are and what you do and why you do it? Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for having us on today, Alison. Appreciate it. Uh, so, Matthew Lincoln from Northern Monkey Creative Media. Uh, we're a web design and digital marketing agency uh, based on the outskirts of Preston. Um, we've been going for... Uh, just under 16 years now uh, and personally I've been doing it for just over 20 years so I'm showing my age a little bit there as well uh, but it really is from the start of the digital era really in online and websites so we've kind of seen everything several times over and um, yeah so we, we, we have a quite a diverse client base um, ranging from small to medium-sized businesses and they span whole across uh, the UK, uh, mainly in the Northwest region where we're based. Uh, but we've got clients as far as uh, the US, Hong Kong, we've got one in Singapore. Um, yeah, and several in Europe as well. We do quite a lot of work with those. So it's, it's nice and we like the diversity of, uh, of different sectors. And obviously with working with different sectors, we do get a lot of industry knowledge from each one that we can then take to a different sector and pass on tips and tricks on that way. So we're... Uh, yeah, it's, that's, uh, it's enjoyable and we like it. And what do you cover? What do you cover, Matthew? You know, when, when you uh, say you're a digital agent, you're a web and digital agency, um, what does that cover? What does that mean? So it, it's several things, really. Um, the predominantly starts, obviously, with a website. Um, obviously, the website needs a good logo and a good brand. So not all of our clients have that in place when they come to us. So we can help them with that. Uh, others have got a, a well-established brand that we can help build it. Um, so we normally build it into a website, um, and a website is not a website. They've come in all shapes and sizes. Um, and then once the website's created, we do two other things. We help market it, so they get business back from what we've developed. Um, and the other aspect of it is we support it. We're there if they have any questions, if they need to move direction with the business, if they have an idea that they would love to bring online or help their clients out we can make it a reality you know and uh, build it into their website for them so websites and marketing um that's the biggest aspect that, that we specialize in at northern monkey brilliant and and you the reason i've asked you uh, today obviously is because the hospitality app you created last year um, in lockdown one and when i was um told about you and then I went to have a look you you very kindly let me in the back office element of it and I was blown away it was GDPR compliant it did what it said on the tin and and I, I am amazed that not more people are actually using that because um when when I look at GDPR compliance it's four percent of the global turnover and I was speaking to cl a client the other day you know, and if you've got a million pound turnover, you know, that's a lot of money that you're going to uh, be fined, and especially at this current time when cash flow is very, very tight for the industry. But not only that, it could be up to 20 million euros. Um, so, it, you know, what whatever's the, the value there. And that app, you know, is still out there. I know it's it's not probably on your hit list to continue uh, developing even further but the app is absolutely it works brilliantly it gives you all the the knowledge uh, of your guests who are in and especially because right now the hospitality industry have got to uh, make sure that anybody who is 16 and above are tracked in mm. their establishment and a lot of people yeah. i talk to do not want to use the nhs app because yeah. of the attitude of other things and there's been some hiccups on it um but your app is great and and i you know i, I think that's important so do you want to tell us a little bit more about the app 
Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, that's yeah. great. So when we developed the uh, software for the hospitality tracker, um, the, the NHS app wasn't even available. The, the government guidelines were saying you need to keep a register of all the people that are uh, coming into your establishment, um, a hotel or a bar or a restaurant. Uh, but they didn't have the app in place. And obviously it's well documented in the news that the first version of the, their app was a big flop and it didn't do everything properly as well. Um, so businesses were writing it down on pieces of paper. They were leaving it on reception. I went to a, a large uh, hotel in the lakes and um, they had it there on reception with everybody. I could got my camera out taking a picture of every single guest that came in there for the last three days. Um, that's a massive GDPR breach, as you know. Um, so the NHS uh, Track and Trace, they brought one out eventually, but ours was going strong and building up momentum there. And again, it's easy to use. It was so easy for businesses to go and administrate and also their clients to go and easily use by scanning a, a, a QR code on entry. Or they could type in the web address and do it manually on the website. So they had a couple of versions of uh, how to access it as well. The third one, they could, the person on the hospitality could even have an iPad taking the details down and doing it as the enter. So there was no excuse for people to not use it. Um, and I know you want to talk a bit about more about that later on, don't you? Um, and it's really, really good. And we built that software and it built up attraction. But there's several things that we did that even the NHS have, hasn't got now. Uh, as you mentioned, it's fully GDPR compliance. Everything's um, above board there. It's all fully secured. But when people uh, sign up and register their details in the venue, it also has, are you happy to keep it up to date with the marketing in your tick box, yes or no, as per GDPR guidelines. But then that data is available for that business, for that hotel, for that restaurant, to then further email them with email marketing campaigns, text message campaigns. Um, so it, not only are you ticking the boxes with the government and guidelines and keeping everyone safe and secured, you're keeping yourself GDPR compliant, but you're also building yourself up a big database marketing um, database at the same time. And so we took the business spin of it. We took what was needed at the time, done it, and packaged it all up into a piece of bespoke software. And uh, it's really, really good, you know, and uh, it's still available now. Um, we do, we've got uh, quite a few um, large chains on there. We've got large chains of garden centers and things using it. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's great. And how much is it? Because that's, I know a lot of people keep saying, oh, they're so expensive and we'll just, and we'll just use a pen and pad. And I'm going, no, no, because if you, if, you know, how would £40,000 look like on a million pound turnover? You know, how would that feel absolutely. right now? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the main reasons we wanted to do it is we saw a lot of our clients struggling and our clients were saying, have you got anything? Have you, do you know of anything? What's available? And because obviously no one's um, had anything like COVID hit them before, there wasn't anything available full stop. We couldn't point them in the right direction. So we jumped on and started to build, you know, that's when we did it. Um, but going back to the price aspect, for us, it was never a moneymaker. It was never an opportunity. It was something to help our clients out initially uh, and as we helped our clients out, they passed, spread the word and passed it on to their neighbours on the high street and other hospitality sectors and places like that that were struggling as well. And we even had grassroots football teams using it for, you know, to go on the teams and stuff. Um, so at the price, we kept it really, really low. It was $4.99 per month and there was no tie-ins. It was an opt-out any time. Um, you even got a 14-day free trial before it started building cycle. So that's kind of like who we are as a company anyway you know that's how we work so uh, yeah so for 4.99 per month compared to a, a potential fine for being gdpr yeah. you know breaching it's um it's a big difference and it's critical i mean i, I i'm still saying get that now above anything else i mean i've I've seen different apps being thrown about, not GDPR compliant. I've seen lots of different systems. And like you said earlier, you've got the three prong attack with it. So you can, you know, your guests can do it, but you can check. You can yeah. check if they track and trace because if they haven't, you've got to find from the government as well. And, and I was speaking to a client uh, down in Lancashire the other day who has been inundated with uh, the council, the, the COVID police or whatever they're called, um, and checking everything in detail. And if you've not got it tight, watertight, and this is going to happen across, they may not have been in already, 
but I know the ICO are, are gearing up to really hit yeah. all track and trace elements, but also making sure that there's none of this going on uh, because that's going to be a major problem. Um, and and, I, and and the the other element as well is, you know, when you see, because uh, media is going to pick it up really quickly. Absolutely. You know, uh, there was something the other day, and this is what I want to allude to, and it's and it's gone viral. There's an old guy sat in, um, and I can say the name because obviously it is public, uh, sat in a, a large chain um, where the spoons, and he sat there and this couple sat at the side of him. He didn't know because it was an app that was to order his food and drink. He didn't have the facility. It was the first time he had been out um, since lockdown. So lockdown one. So you can imagine that's a long time. And it was the yeah. first time out and all he wanted was a pint. Bless you. But he couldn't use it. And, and this is where I guess the digital era has gone far past a lot of customers that are out there. There's a lot of guests who are coming into our establishments. And, and a, the couple at the side decided to buy him a couple of pints because he couldn't do it. And, and what would you suggest for somebody, you know, who, I mean, I mean, for me, I'm, you know, my FAQ Friday was all about it this last week because it really touched my heart that if somebody's going out into our industry, that already customer expectations are far beyond what they've ever been, you know, and it's all about experience now. And if you miss it, it's going to have a detrimental effect on your business, not only, you know, to your revenue, but your occupancy and everything that goes with it, your marketing, your PR disaster crisis a lot. Um, and, you know, I look at, I look at that social media that went out and the press that jumped on the bandwagon and I thought, hell, you don't want to be that. So what would you suggest would be the ideal scenario for a business that wants to do an app that would be food order, drink order? But surely mm. there's a human element. Surely as hospitality, we are being hospitable. Uh, that's what's in the name, is it not? I was going to say the clues in the name there, isn't it? Hospitality, you know, uh, and technology, as much as we love it, you know, it all boils down to the user, you know, I mean, that's going to be using it or the, the business that's actually putting it out there for their clientele, the, the other side of the user. Um, like, for instance, in the Weber Springs, I recently went out with a group of friends when we was allowed and uh, it was meeting outside only, you know, um, eat, uh, to eat and drink outdoors. And I went to a local web experience and I didn't have the app myself. And obviously, you know, we build apps and we I regularly use apps. Certainly nobody can say I'm a technophobe in any, anywhere. Um, and I couldn't download it. Now, where we was, uh, it was on the coast and there was no, uh, no uh, not very good uh, phone signal. So uh, I couldn't get um, the 4G, 5G. Um, so I was trying to download it through the uh, web experience ho uh, hotel pub uh, Wi-Fi. But because it was outside, it was so weak and it wouldn't download the app. So I couldn't even download the app even to go and do it, which I was happy to download the app. Uh, I was happy to use the app, um, but I couldn't even download it because I couldn't use their Wi-Fi because they've not got the technology and the infrastructure to service their own guests in their own premises. So it's an IT issue, but they didn't think about that. You know, right, we're getting people to use the app. Have we got everything around us that we need to support that app? Um, now, the other thing there, going back to the hospitality, nobody, I mean, we're not talking about one specific chain. This is in general. You no, know what I mean? Stuff like, it's my experience. It's happening in every chain, I think. It is, it is. is. And to be fair, you know, I mean, the food was fantastic and all this. I really enjoyed it. I had a great time. But, you know, at that point as well, the staff didn't come over to say, take an order or anything like that. It was like, but there was no table toppers or anything to explain how to order it, you know. Um, I was quite lucky because one of my friends already had the app installed and he paid for my, my meal. So I, I, I had a great, great time. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. But um, you'll never let me forget it. Don't worry. Um, but yeah. So, you know, things like table toppers, this is how to do it. Clear instructions, you know, you get them in acrylic uh, holders so they don't blow away or don't get wet if it showers. Um, you know, it should be good hospitality that they come over and say, can we help? Have you got the app? No, uh, no problem at all. It might be worth you downloading because it's easier for you the next time. But like, I can take your order for you now. And that goes back into the hospitality side of it. So a nice uh, mix in that scenario would be 
an app that worked well and, and was usable, which that Weatherspoons app is, if you, you know, you've got it. Uh, have the infrastructure in place, such as to make sure the Wi-Fi can reach, you know, into the beer gardens or to your outdoor areas, which is not hard, you know what I mean, with an IT person. And then look for external support, the, the training of the staff, but then also anything else you can do, such as table toppers or uh, little laminated cards on the tables and things like that. Because um, I've even seen it before where you say, you go onto an app, enter your table number. They've not even got table numbers on the tables, you know. So it boils down to technology, but also the users that are going to be using technology. And that's whether it's an app or a website as well. And I think that's testing out your own systems prior to you opening the doors. I mean, we've got an industry that's opened the doors now. Some some businesses are holding off until they can really get everything under the feet. But for those who, who are doing that, then they've got the you know, prime uh, chance now to actually do this. Uh, but you're right. And, and it is every industry and every um every business at the moment you know it's only we only use that uh business uh, well the organization uh the chain simply because that went viral the other day and it and it but it is happening in, in every area mm -hmm. i i go around in the businesses locally and this is still going on and i'm thinking mm -hmm. Guys, I have told you, we've had the discussion, we're talking months down the line and the ICO are on the way. And, and I think all it takes is somebody to take a picture, you know, of that, as you said earlier, and there's a real problem. But, but yeah, I think guest experience, our customers now, are that it's vital that they come in um, and have an amazing experience because gone are the days, and I said this uh, last week when I spoke to Sarah Young, gone are the days where um, people are coming just for what they used to experience. Now they're expecting far more and they're not as polite as they used to be because it, lockdown has actually created a problem in the in the aspect of social how how people are being social they're, they're not used to being social with each other anymore yeah, yeah. a lot of people are suffering from anxiety as well <laughs> going to crowded places and uh, you know and ordering and you know it's mm. it, it's easily uh, people don't think about how people are actually feeling in these places so if anything you can do to help them out and you know and help them with any technology aspects it's going to make them feel comfortable welcomed and want to return yeah yeah especially if they've not been out for a very long time yeah. and so you know what what benefits working with you because because you're you're you know a great guy you seem reasonable you, you. <laughs> um, and uh, you know you've you've got behind you a sort of a list of things that you do um but what are the benefits of working with you rather than another digital marketing agency or web and digital marketing yeah agency? sure it's a good, good question Alison. so we uh, so as mentioned before we've been um running for 16 years now and we're really proud of that fact because we see a lot of other agencies that you know Come and go a little bit you know when uh, we've got the history behind us um, and the support I mean, each year we've grown and grown from that um 80 percent plus of our work is through recommendations so that's doing a piece of work for one client and then them recommending us to their big business contact spheres um, and we get a buzz off that you know what i mean we, we do enjoy that uh, it also means that we work with like-minded businesses similar to our own you know where we can um get a tour of their facilities, we have a show round, we support them, we try and introduce them to other clients, you know, that can be a good fit so they can pass business between each other. So we do that. The other thing that we look to do that a lot of agencies don't um, is we look for that extra little bit. What, what else can we do? Whether it be on the website or an app or something to support the app, like I mentioned. Um, so, you know, um, we're currently building um, a, a car showroom over in Chester uh, with, um, it has a large MOT center attached to it. So that was the brief. What we actually looked at is what can, else can we do? So what we've done there is an MOT checker. So it ties into the DVLA database. You type in your registration and it pulls back when your MOT is actually due. You know what I mean? So you can check if your MOT is due and when on his website didn't ask for that um, and also it's really easy for us to do so we didn't even charge extra for the client to do that and um, because it, it, it was 20 minutes worth of work it wasn't a lot to do 
that going that extra mile, you know, for the client and getting extra traffic, because he could then put that on his social media. You know, when do you know when your next MOG is due? If not, check here and you can click on it. It drives traffic to their website. When people are on the website, they can say, oh, I didn't know you also did that. Or you do, right, can you get, do a service and an MOT at the same time? That's brilliant. So just extra things like that, that we can do bespoke software or tying it into a third party. That's what makes us different, really. That and the customer experience and support that we offer all our clients. Over delivering, I love that. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I mean, that. to be honest, in our industry, that's the biggest thing that before, you know, most clients that we, they come to us, uh, they've been stung at some point by another agency by doing the complete opposite, you know, over promising and under delivering. We have always tried to make a name for ourselves, uh, even from the early days of doing the complete opposite. Brilliant. I love yeah. that. <laughs> and, you know, obviously businesses, because you mentioned the car showroom and that's fantastic. And, and businesses like the hospitality industry, you, you work with them. How, how can you add value to them? What is the added value that you can add to them? Yeah, well, in the hospitality sector, um, I think a lot of it is just on the websites, you know, because um, you need to go to the websites now. Now, most of our clients in the hospitality sector, you know, the hotels and restaurants, we've been working closely with a lot of our restaurants and in, uh, introducing table booking systems now because obviously um, they're limited for space. They put, there's no standing up at the bars areas. They can't get the actual footfall into the place. Um, so we've been doing booking systems into there. So there's still a lot of uh, restaurants that don't have table booking systems. You know, they're trying to do it over the phone. And, you know, some of them, um, pubs that we do, pub chains, uh, we're taking deposits for a table. So it's £5, but then you get that credit to spend back over the bar Brilliant. because they don't want people no-showing. So these aspects like that. The other thing in hospitality sector that's more so uh, now than ever is the tone of voice that you need to put on your website. Is it inviting? Is it friendly? Um, how, you know, um, all of the FAQs on there, you know, you can put an FAQs page on there, which helps um, the customer instantly put their mind at ease. You put, it's surprising how many restaurants don't even have menus on their websites, you know, and it, it's simple things like this. And, you know, it, we know all the little tick boxes to take to make a, a perfect website. And, for us and doing it for so long, it's not hard, but that's the difference between coming to us and some other agencies that are out there. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a basic stuff in our heads, but in reality, yeah. it's not being delivered with. And I know I'm going to ask you the next thing, which is what are your top tips? Well, one of my tips is plugging my laptop in because it's going to die. So uh, okay, quickly pull that in. There you go. <laughs> That's perfect. So, um, yeah, that's one thing that you should always do when you're getting interviewed. Um, but no, I have got five tips anyway. For, and, uh, I've, I've tailored them around the hospitality sector, obviously. Um, these are ones that we get asked regular. These are ones that we see uh, people, clients fall down on all the time. Uh, so if we can give these out and it helps anybody, that's fantastic because, you know, we're it's now time for us all to get the, the hospitality sector kick started, you know, and, uh, you know, make up for the last year and I for one be out everywhere I can, you know, drinking, eating, it's going to be fantastic staying over places. Um, so going back to the websites, my first tip is, is your website GDPR compliant? Now we talked about the app and the software we did for the hospitality tracker uh, and that's keeping all of your clients data safe, but websites have to be GDPR compliant as well. Uh, and lots of businesses um, aren't still. Uh, we do this all as default, the Northern Monkey. Um, now, it, it's not hard to do as well. Uh, and also, if you're getting audited by the GDPR police, uh, they're going to check your website out first. So if your website's GDPR compliant, they're probably not going to take it any further than that, and they're going to move on to the next business and check them out. And if they're not, well, then they're going to give a call, do an inspection, and that's not what you want. So to get a website GDPR compliant, really just have a little link in the bottom of your footer, just saying marketing opt-out. Um, and when somebody clicks on that, it comes up a form, you enter their contact details, submit. And then basically when you receive that, you take all of their details off your systems uh, and then you're GDPR compliant. The other thing as well is part of GDPR compliancy says that you have to make your digital aspects and your website as secure as possible. Now, secure as possible, if you're the FBI or NASA, there's a greater level of security, obviously. 
Uh, but for the general business, it just means simple things like having an SSL certificate in place, which is the little secure padlock on the browser. Um, it's very easy to put one of those on the website. Um, but again, that's what they're going to be looking for because you might say, um, I'm not collecting any data on my website, but by anyone entering an inquiry field or using live chat, they are. So you ticking those boxes there. So I go on to number two, Alison. Yeah, and I think I think added to that as well, if they put the privacy policy on, you know, for the data protection, because the ICO are looking out now, and, and you're right, if they see on the website straight off, they will pass you by, I think, uh, like yourself. They'll pass you by and move on to somebody who's not got it right on the front page, really. Yeah, absolutely. And to be honest, like say, um, I've certainly not heard of, it may well have been done, but I, I've not heard of any of our clients have, ever having that filled in, you know what I mean, on their websites are regularly used um, because they've got happy clients as well, you know what I mean, and stuff like this. But just having it on there ticks the boxes, makes you sleep easy at night, and it's super easy to do. It's, it's um, you know, to add that extra form on, no more than half an hour three quarters now it's added onto any website it's nothing so and it's the transparency and that's what guests value you for you know if you're very clear and transparent with what you do and why you use the data then they're happy it's when they don't know that's when the problems start to begin and that's where the ico comes in and takes four percent of your global turnover absolutely mm -hmm. yes <laughs> it's not good is it top tip number two okay right brilliant um, so in the hospitality sector, um, a lot of the websites uh, or even apps have booking systems. Now, booking systems are quite complex. They're all coded and you have to link into an online calendar and that's to be viewed at the different locations, etc. So it's a good bit of software there. Uh, and you don't have to go bespoke. You know, you can, there's lots of third party software you can integrate into most websites that is a brilliant solution. Um, but I would say to advise for tip number two is, is yours working? Is it easy to book or not? Uh, and you'd be super surprised that they might have said, oh, yeah, we've always been using that one. And they've not updated that software in four years, five years, that company, because, well, they're making money from it. They're happy with it, you know. Um, but it, it can be clunky. It can be hard to use. It might not be mobile friendly anymore, you know. So um, have a look on it. Go on, put your customer perspective hat on, go to your website and just try and make a booking or a table reservation for your system uh, and see if it's easier to use. Also, if you find it easy to use uh, and you've got an, an elderly relative or something that's a bit more, uh, you know, not as uh, technical as yourself, ask them to go and do it. Simple as that. You know, how, how do you find it? And if everyone's finding it clunky, well, there's lots and lots of providers out there as well. So that's the time to change. So I say just go and check your booking systems on there as well. And it sounds pretty simple, but the best little ticks, the best little hacks often are. And I think, I think those people who are, have a, a high uh, commission on third party websites need to be definitely doing that especially because yeah. the reason why people go to other websites and book is because nine times out of ten they can't do it on the website easy and quick yeah, yeah absolutely so you're right yeah you're right Brilliant. You see, it, it was um it wasn't for um a um a hospitality but i recently went on and uh, booked uh, two memberships for me and my daughter um, and it, one went through fine one didn't you know what i mean so they ended, ended up then having to ring the venue up directly and saying i've had my payment taken out however i've not had confirmation back for the second booking and it was a lot of hassle a lot of faff for me you know um as a customer point of view so again you know luckily i was picking it all up and then proceeding with it but often you will just get drop dropped checkouts drop baskets you know they'll just disappear and go somewhere else they do but the other added element because the industry is struggling with staffing at the moment and time and that's just added probably about an hour and a half time on what they mm -hmm. could have avoided if they'd have actually put your top tip number two in or if I did it at nine o'clock in the morning or half eight before yeah. work uh, and that hospitality venue doesn't open until 12 that afternoon, ready for dinner, um, I can't ring them for three or four hours. Then I might forget because I've got a busy day at work and you've just lost it. It, it. You'll never know the ones that you've lost. You know what I mean? And the, the, unlike me the other day, very rarely will you get them phoning up and saying, do you know, you've got a problem. Can I sort it out with you over the phone? You know, you just lose them. And, and they might be busy at the moment because everybody's trying to get out and support the industry and all, obviously get out and 
and experience uh, overnight stays in the UK, etc. However, it's not long term and it's not future proofing. And it's when the quiet times come, it's too late then, because yeah. by then you're then firefighting and having to decrease costs and having to, you know, go into crisis mode. Yeah, again, and yeah, exactly. And it's relatively easy to put a new booking system, a new third party booking system into an existing website. So you won't have to get your website rebuilt or anything like this. A couple of hours worth of development, you know, integrating the new third party and then a little bit of a learning curve at your end, how to manage them bookings on your own computer. It could make a difference. And if you're losing one or two bookings a week, add them up over a month, add them up over a year. It's a substantial amount of money that you could be losing. Yeah plus the time and energy that your team are taking on top. Absolutely. Top tip number three. Okay, um, right, so uh, payment methods. So if you are taking a uh, payment, be either linked into your booking system or come directly with a simple table reservation system, you're taking a deposit, like we mentioned some of our clients. Um, what, what payment gateway are you using? You know, is it easy to use, yes or no? The, the payment methods you take, um, are specific to the sector that you're doing and the type of business. Um, so for instance, like PayPal is dead popular, it's linked into eBay, but it's very hard because PayPal want you to sign in to PayPal to go and do it, but not everyone has a PayPal account. Mm -hmm. uh, and under very small underneath, it says, our oh, PayPal debit card. You know what I mean? And you have to click a small link that then takes you through to it. So it's quite a hard system to use if you're not familiar with PayPal. If you offer the customer two, you can offer them a separate one, a Stripe one or a No Checks or Sage, there's hundreds out there, uh, as well as PayPal. You can say, you know, enter your PayPal details or enter your card details. Okay, well, card details will go down that route. And it gives the customers options. Uh, and also recently, um, PayPal had a big dropout. Um, it was only re very recent. Uh, and the whole of the UK uh, couldn't use PayPal for uh, at least a day. So anyone with e-commerce websites or bookings or anything like this, they, they look lost a day's trade. Um, so if you've got two payment gateways, that's often a really good tip as well. Look at how they're doing it and how easy it is to put your card details in. Mm. So. Yeah, that's a very good point. Very good point. Especially if one goes down, the other one's there. But it needs to be clear because I, I agree with you. If it's not clear, um, it's a lost booking. It's a lost sale. Yeah, and also not only, I mean, when you enter those card details, you go over to the third party, PayPal or Stripe or NoChecks, um, but you've got to add the level of security on there. You, the website around it has got to look professional and secured and, you know, not amateurish because that people aren't going to be putting their uh, card details anything, into anything that looks like a home-built website or anything like this. You, you can't ask for that level of trust because they'll just think it's a scam. Yeah, definitely. And if it's not branded... <laughs> yeah, yeah so it, again it sounds quite simple but you know where uh, it makes a massive difference we've had clients before that have been happy using the ima the internet merchant account for many many moons and um, but then we've recommended a different one to they switched him and suddenly with no extra marketing <laughs> or anything like that with their existing traffic volumes that are coming to it you see a, a dramatic increase in sales um <laughs> by making it easier for their customers to use. are you right there Ison? yeah you just have a drink <laughs> I had a cough last weekend and it's, uh, it <coughs> tickles now and again. Tickle. Yeah. <coughs> no, it, that is definitely um, something that we can easily do or any agency can we easily do as well. You know, just by looking at that and just seeing how easy it is to go and put card details in and then go submit. Um, the other thing as well, I was on um, Spotify <coughs> and um, registering my password and they have a capture cipher where it's the Google one where it's like, uh, put, click all the squares with traffic lights uh, and some of the IMAs can get linked into a capture as well for additional security like a second level but on Spotify this morning when I was resetting my password I had to do that seven times so I had to choose traffic lights I had to choose crosswalks I had to choose hydrants seven times before it verified me as, as a human being and not a robot way too much there's much simpler systems out there than that you know, so even big businesses like Spotify are still getting it wrong. You know what I mean? Uh, so don't, if you're a small business, don't beat yourself up. Just have a good look at it and you yeah. can change it. And it's like it's like your tip where, you know, go through your customer journey. Yeah. Well, that's for number four. You know what I mean? Test your own website <coughs> or test your own website. Test your own <coughs> app. Test your own systems. You're right, Alison. You, you, I you am. Know, I'm right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
but yeah, you know, so we see a lot of this now. Uh, we've had um, clients that have come to us in the past. Yeah, I've come from my other agency over to you guys. Um, my web, somebody phoned up and said the, the, where the inquiry back form weren't working on your website, you know, and I weren't getting an answer from you, you know. Um, and then you've looked into it and it's been down for a week or two weeks, you know, the, yeah, from the inquiry page, you know. Um, so as a business owner, you know, take the emphasis to yourself, go and test your own website, test your own system. <coughs> I, um, think, I think that's, I think it's taking the responsibility and put it in your diary like you would do anything else in your absolutely. own system. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the other thing as well is a lot of those inquiry forms go free to an email, you know, but if your Outlook has got a problem or your IT or your laptop's broken, you're still missing live inquiries there. So it's not even around the website or the inquiry form. It could be, a fit, you know, the other end of the spectrum that, you know, it's uh, that's causing the issue. But, you know, you don't want to lose one client, you know, because they could then go on and leave you a bad review. No one ever got back to me. You know, it's like, well, yeah. you know. Um, so test your own website, you know, test the inquiry forms. Test it works in all browsers because everyone thinks, oh yeah, it website's working, it's working great in my Safari. But have you done it to test it yourself in Chrome? You know, have you uh, tested it on a mobile device? It might look brilliant on your laptop, but it's so clunky and hard to use and super slow on, on your on your mobile phone. And 70% of traffic will be from a phone. So mm. test your own website was tip number four. Brilliant. Yeah. And that's critical. It, test it, your own it, website as a guest or your customer. Absolutely. Yeah, the client be looking for. Yeah, I mean, the majority of our clients, they're on support plans with us and they're optional support plans, but that's something we regularly do. We go through the whole of the website as if we're a consumer, as if we're a, a, a prospective client for their industry, for their sector. Uh, and we try and break it. We try and put things in or what ifs, you know, and stuff like that. And, and then we come up with ideas and how we can just go from version one to version 1.5 and version two and version 2.5 and constantly improve it. And, you know, that in turn leads to extra revenue for them, you know, so, and that's what we want. So. Brilliant. Yeah. So top tip good. number five. So the top, last, last tip, uh, the top five tips, um, is something that we have seen massive, especially over the last couple of years, um, introducing live chat systems into websites. They're brilliant. I know you've got this one on your website, Alison, as well. Um, the, we've seen massive conversions hugely with that, you know, because people, uh, customers, consumers, they might have silly questions, you know, if it's a restaurant, you know, or do, do you cater for nut allergies? It's a silly question, but to them, it's a massive deal, you know, and if they get replied quickly there and then, it leads them to going to a booking page and secure the booking for that evening. Uh, it, so a lot of the live chats are little silly questions and they might even be answered somewhere else on the website, but you can never presume it and you've got it offered that there. So just by having a live chat system on your website and adding that little bit of interaction and um, extra communication, because uh, everyone wants an answer now, they might not like picking the phone up or have the time to do it. They definitely not the time to send you an email and they're certainly not going to write you a letter to see if you cater for uh, nut allergies or vegetarians. So live chat's brilliant for things like this uh, or room requirements if they need disabled access and things like that. Um, live chats as well, long gone of the day, and this is the big myth, this is the big barrier we see clients and businesses come up against. They think they have to be sat there in front of a computer waiting for that to pop up on their screen to answer it. It doesn't, does it, Alison? You know, it, it, it comes through as a what a message on an app, on, you know, and you just basically, it's like it coming through as a text message or a WhatsApp and you answer it from your phone and that's it. And it's, it feeds into the website and it's really easy to use. Um, I mean, to, it depends on the circumstances, but you can add live chat from, from a couple hundred pounds, you know, and it's, it's just a low cost solution like that. The, the inquiries, the engagement, it leading then to bookings or to, oh, thanks for that, it's brilliant. Yeah, well, I'll speak to such and such and I'll come and book on it next week or I'll let my friend know about that. That's brilliant. Um, it adds lots of extra business and revenue. Um, and, and that's something that we're keen at at Northern Monkey Creative Media, tracking the systems, making sure that they bring the extra revenue in and having all the analytics behind it to prove it. So all these little things I mentioned today, they're all quick, simple, easy little hacks and not cost it, uh, expensive at all. You know, having a live chat system for a couple hundred pounds, probably the biggest ticket item there. But if you lose one big meal or one room booking um, or anything like that, it's paid for itself. Yeah. You know. 
Yeah, and it, and and also checking your live chats actually online because when when we were discussing earlier, you know, mine and I noticed mine was offline. I went, I'm always online. What on earth? But it's just checking all the time because something just could click off at yeah. any time. And it's just Absolutely. making you guess. I mean, you might log on to your live chat and your laptop does an automatic restart if you've plugged in via your laptop, you know, and it's doing some updates and it doesn't open up. So, I mean, you, you talked about it coming through. This is not yours particularly, Alison. I know you've got a different system. No, mine's on my phone. Yours is brilliant. That's fantastic. But if you, some clients do prefer to do it on a desktop and they've got like reception staff that can easily monitor it and things like this. Um, but if it, you know, the laptop restarts, but you know, and it doesn't do it, but you can do a little workaround by adding it as a startup program to your on your laptop, you know. So as soon as your laptop restarts, it automatically boots that up, you know. And um, so you, you can get around it as well, businesses, you know, the, the, there's always a solution and an answer to it. That's, that's I love it. that. Having a no problem policy and always having a solution to anything that comes your way. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's amazing. So um all your clients and your past clients if somebody was watching this today and and saying gosh you know that sounds really interesting uh but what what would your clients and your past clients say to somebody who was just on the fence somebody who you know wasn't thinking about oh i better ring them straight away or i better just go on the website and check them out what would you say your past clients or clients currently would say to them yeah, well, on our website, on Google and on our Facebook page, we've got lots of reviews from our fantastic clients, you know, uh, they're doing honest reviews from the heart, you know, um, and I'm sure I speak for all of them, if you wanted to contact them directly, they'd be happy to speak to you about us, you know, and tell you the truth, because they are all 100% uh, genuine. Um, but what we say, if anyone's on the knife edge of, you know, should we ring us or not, um, we, we all start, just like we're doing today, you know, let's have a quick to do meeting, let's have a quick chat. If you're local, we're starting to do face-to-face -face meetings again now as well as a company. Uh, we can do all socially distanced and things like that if people are a bit nervous still. Um, but yeah, you know, we'll have a chat. You know, we'll go through, we'll have a look at your website, we'll have a look at what you're doing, we'll put some ideas on the table. Um, and hopefully that will then lead to them asking us to quote to do the work and we'd love to welcome the new business. But if not, they, they take some ideas and where they want to be in a three months time when they're ready. And we might get that call in three months time. So we're open, we're, we're open to speak to anybody, you know, um, if anyone needs any help. And even if we don't win work, we're, we're fine with that because we know that person would recommend us or say, oh, they're a great bunch of people and they know the stuff, you know, and it, it's always worked for that us in the last 16 years. Um, it, we've got portfolio on our website as well. So have a look at that and you can see the caliber of the work there, you know, and uh, and I, love, and I love the fact, and, and I only met you simply because of the hospitality track, because I was looking out and, and somebody highlighted it to me and said, have you seen this? And when I looked at the price, after going in the back end of it and checking it all out before I even mentioned you, because I always check everything out uh, before I showcase any, anybody's business. Um, and when I looked at the back end and, and what it did for the hospitality industry and I thought, four ninety nine, you really have, you know, proper, not price yourself <laughs> in yeah. there. The value of that is ridiculous and, and it's a no brainer because of the For me, it was also the marketing element. It was for one simple tick opt in on that app. They yeah. had a heck of a database that, especially before the Eat Out Help Out came in last year, Absolutely. that was crazy. And now where you're getting everybody's details, it's gold dust. And, and I think, you know, that your, your customers, your clients who are currently using that system, you know, all credit to them for investing because they will have golden nuggets for the future for their marketing. Absolutely. And what we, we've obviously doing now, and we, 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 they said pricing structure, we did it at that price because we did want to help our existing clients out and contribute something back to a crazy world, what we're living in, you know, um, and so having somewhere to turn to. Um, we developed it all in-house as well. So, you know, our costs, um, we could sustain that. Um, and also what we're doing now, and we're quite thankful, obviously, you know, we're hoping that the track and trace will disappear soon. Normality will return back to how it used to be in the good old days, you know, 
And we won't be sad when that fizzles out, you know what I mean? Because it's done a really good job and helps a lot of people in that time. Um, but what we are doing now is we're adapting that software as well uh, to be like a reward scheme, to be uh, easy into the marketing. So hospitality venues can still go in and use it and we can display different posters. They can still scan a QR code uh, and still get them to register their interest on there. Uh, and then the businesses are still collecting that information. So we're doing it as a bit of a, a, a reward scheme, point scheme, or keep up to date with our latest news and special offers. All you've got to do is quickly do this, scan the QR code, put your name and uh, contact details in, and then he's collecting it. So what we're actually doing now is transitioning it and ad adapting it for something else and running it side by side. So um, again, that's something that we've got bubbling away I in the near future. That. I love developing and, and, and moving it forward. And loyalty schemes are massive for especially people to come back to the same venue again and again and again. Loyalty schemes are, are the way forward as well as being hospita hospitality, but hospi <laughs> hospitable and, and making the experience, you know, the value added extras. That's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Matthew. Obviously, um, all your details to get into contact with you, we're going to put at the end of this interview so that people can contact you direct. Um, and, and I think what what content everybody's got from you now, I, I'm absolutely you know overwhelmed with the content because if people can't do something straight away from your top tips alone, never mind anything else, um i don't know what what they're doing <laughs> well, that's great. I, hope, I hope we've helped out some people today you know what i mean and like you say some of it's not rocket science and it's some things you can do yourself um but you know it will make a big difference uh, even financially you know to your own business yeah and i think i think on, on top of that it's the it's the especially with the staffing crisis at the moment in the industry it will help save them time money uh, it will help the team and it will help the team actually understand because in staffing crisis is what happens, you forget the basics. And, and we're trying to highlight those basics, how important they are, especially the, uh, the, the guy who couldn't even order a pint for himself yeah. after lockdown. And if people can just be aware of one simple thing and, or, or to, you know, to get an app or, or to actually help and support them or save them, a lot of money by the ICO with the GDPR <laughs> compliance. My goodness, that's crazy. Absolutely. I mean, one, one of those fines, you could probably pay for your whole marketing uh, for a, a good year or two, couldn't it? You know what I mean? So it's um, it's better to be like proactive rather than, uh, you know, reactive afterwards. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much, Matthew. You have been an absolute gem and I will definitely uh, love to see uh, see how your app develops even further. I'd love to see that. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us today, Alison. Appreciate it. Pleasure.